Hello my friends, welcome back to the practical activities, this time on the ECLAM model, still in association rule learning. All right, so this tutorial is actually going to be a quick one because as you understood in Kirill's intuition lecture, well, the ECLAM model is actually a simplified version of the priori model because we only deal with the support and we don't even have rules. We only consider sets of products of which we analyze the support. So it's way simpler than the a priori model. And therefore that leads to the second reason why this will be quick. Really, if you have to choose an association rule learning model to do association rule mining, I by no doubt recommend the a priori model. However, it's possible that in some business problems, you will only consider the support. You know, you're only interested in doing a support analysis and therefore you might use ECLA in exceptional situations. But still, even with a priori, you can do this. So that's why it's gonna be quick. And besides, the way we're gonna build ECLA, you know, in Python, is by just adapting our a priori model so that we only consider the support, right? Because indeed the ECLA doesn't include any confidence or lift analysis. Okay, so let's do this quickly. This will, you know, give you an extra association rule learning model in the toolkit. So that's still good anyways, but really the focus should be on the a priori model. All right, so before we start, let's make sure everyone here is on the same page. I gave you the link to this folder right before this tutorial, so make sure to connect to it. And now let's all go into part five, association rule learning, then section 29, ECLA, and Python, where you will find two files, the ECLA model in IPYNB format, and the same data set, market basket optimization. Let's quickly remind the scenario. There is a shop owner in the south of France who would like to boost the sales of the shop, and therefore he's trying to find the best association of products to sell to the customers in a deal. And the deal that this owner has in mind is the following, buy one product and get another one for free. So this time we're gonna use ECLA analysis to analyze the highest supports of combination of products. Here are two products because the deal is buy one, get another one for free. So well, that's exactly the same scenario as in a priori and therefore let's directly get into the implementation. All right, so let's open it. We're gonna open it with either Google Collaboratory or Jupyter Notebook. Choose your favorite. And now the notebook is opening. Soon it will be laying out and in a second we should have it. There we go. All right, so loading it, then laying it out, and there we go, we have it. So that's the ECLA implementation. As you will notice, it is very similar to the a priori implementation because indeed, the way I built the ECLA model is just by adapting this a priori package to the ECLA model by only considering the support. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. You know, I'm gonna show you from scratch how I turned that a priori implementation into this new ECLA implementation. So here, instead of, you know, creating a copy of this ECLA implementation and then, you know, removing all the cells and re-implementing them from scratch, we're gonna take instead our a priori implementation, then we're gonna create a copy of this implementation by clicking here on save a copy in drive. And then that's where, you know, that's on this copy that I will show you how I transformed this a priori implementation into the ECLA implementation. All right, are you ready? Let's do this. So the first thing I did was to, well, very simply change the name here of the IPYNB file and I called it ECLA. All right, let's start with the simplest change. Then still very simple, I changed the title here from priori to ECLA. I'm really showing you everything I did to make that ECLA implementation. Then. I looked section after section and see if I had to change anything. Here, we still have to install this Apiary package because, you know, we're building the ECLA model through a simplified version of the Apiary model. So let's keep this. We can remove all the outputs here because we will rerun everything. Then I kept the three same libraries here. I kept the same data preprocessing phase, you know, because indeed we still need that transactions list containing all the transactions into a list. All right, then here, when training the a priori model on the data set, well, same, I kept everything. We could even, you know, remove the min confidence and min lift here in order to really only consider the support, but I recommend to still keep them because you know, these two will give you even stronger associations. So I don't recommend to remove them. And then 
I kept these because we're still in the same scenario to find the best deals, buy one product, get another product for free. So we still have to keep this. But then in the end, I'll explain how to run some Eclat analysis on a larger set of products, right? Because remember that with Eclat, we're not considering rules, but sets of products. And that's because we're only considering the support, you know, the support of a set of products, like let's say ABC, which is of course, the number of transactions containing the products A, B and C divided by the total number of transactions, right? So that's why there is not this direction and therefore these rules. Okay, so here I kept exactly the same. We can, you know, change a priory here by Eclat if you want, depending on how you want to see it. Okay, and then when visualizing the results, that's where I'll show you what I did as a main change, you know, as an essential change here. I didn't change anything. I still displayed all the rules, you know, in this list of complicated structure. But then here, when, you know, putting all the results, you know, all the rules well organized into a pandas data frame, well, I'm going to show you what I did. Let's scroll down. Well, this time, since we no longer have confidences and lifts for our rules, well, very simply, I took this and then I removed these two rows, you know, the confidences and the lift removed of that inspect function. And then same, obviously, we have to remove that here as well, right? Because for the eclamoral, there is no confidence or lift. So there we go. And same in the columns names here, you know, when creating the final data frame, nicely visualizing the result. Well, I removed, of course, confidence and lift here. And I even replaced, you know, left hand side by actually product one and right hand side by product two. And that's because, you know, in the eclamoral, there is no rule, you know, we're only considering set of products. And therefore, there is no question of left hand side or right hand side of a rule. All right, so that's what I changed in the cell. Then in this cell, well, I simply had to remove it because, you know, the principle of the eclat model is just to return the different sets by descending supports, you know, from the highest support to the lowest one. And therefore here we absolutely need to sort these supports directly. So I just removed this cell and this one as well so that we can directly display the results by descending, not lifts, but supports. All right. And of course, to do this here, we had to replace lifts by support. And now it should be all good. Let's remove this and let's rerun everything. You know, we can also remove this by the way, right? We have no output. So now we're going to rerun everything. But first, let's not forget to upload the data set inside the notebook. All right. So right now the notebook is connecting to a runtime to enable file browsing. And in a second, we should see that upload button. There we go. All right. Let's upload. Then please find your machine learning. It is that codes and data set folder in your machine Then go to part five association rule learning, then section 29 ECLA. Python, and there you go. Please select your data set, market basket optimization. All right, so this will upload it inside the notebook in a second, right? It's a big data set. There we go, perfect. And now we're simply going to run everything and make sure everything works properly by clicking runtime here and then run all. So first it will install that Apiary package the same way by first downloading it from the link and then installing it into the notebook. There we go then importing the libraries, then data preprocessing phase, then the training, and then the results. So here we have, of course, the same results as before, but then for the final results, you know, which are supposed to be the final output of the Eclat model. Well, there you go. You have them here displaying the results sorted by descending support. And indeed, we see the combination of two products, you know, the set of two products from the highest support 0.0159, which means 1.6% down to the lowest support, you know, for the 10 highest supports, you know, the 10 sets of products with the 10 highest supports. All right. And that's, you know, exactly what the output of the Eclat model is supposed to be. So you see, we simply built this Eclat model by adapting the a priori model to the Eclat model and returning the exact same output as the Eclat model is supposed to give us, meaning the set of products having the highest supports. And then if you want to perform an analysis with larger sets of products, because here we only do this for sets of two products. Well, very simply, you just need to, you know, in the training cell, you just need to 
change these parameters from min length equals two, you can keep this one, but then increasing the maximum length. And this will give you some larger sets of products. And even if you know you will have this set of several products here and then one product here, because you know there is still this direction as in a rule, well, that's fine because then the support of a rule with several products on the left hand side and one product on the right hand side, well, is still the same support of the set containing all these products. All right, so that's how you would use this ECLA implementation for larger sets of products. Okay, so good, let's have a quick look at the result. Well, we have kind of the same ones as before, but this time in a different order because we sorted them by descending supports. But there you go, the set of two products that appear most frequently in the store, you know, that are purchased most frequently are herb and pepper with ground beef, whole wheat pasta with olive oil, pasta with escalope, mushroom cream sauce with escalope, you know, all these seem very relevant associations leading to exquisite meals cooked at home, right? All this actually makes me kind of hungry. Okay, so there you go. So you have now an extra association rule learning model in your toolkit, the ECLA model nicely adapted from the a priori model. But remember my recommendation, I still recommend to work with the a priori model because these extra metrics such as the confidence and the lift will give you much stronger results in the end. But good that you have the two models. And now we're gonna move on to a very exciting part, which is reinforcement learning. And you have to know that here we will actually make a step a lot closer to artificial intelligence because reinforcement learning is the branch of machine learning with which you know you can implement robotics, you know, robots. And of course, in part six, we won't implement a robot, but still you will get the basics of artificial intelligence and how you can build robots. So I can't wait to see you in this next part. You can actually hear by the sound of my voice that reinforcement learning is one of my favorite branches of machine learning and my favorite application of AI. So I'll be more than happy to teach it to you. And until then, enjoy machine learning.